It's Mike. We're here with another episode of the Made in New York podcast. We have artist and activist Allison Daco with us. Thank you for joining us. Tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, and so on. Well, thank you for having me. Um, so, my name is Allison Daco. I'm a creator um, from graphic design, artwork, but then I'm also an activist as well. So, I'm in a realm of everything creative, I guess you could say. So, has that always been the case? Like, when, like little Allison, was she creative and, and an activist as well, or did one of them come later in life, or were they always kind of who you were? I would say I was always creative in some realm, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it be the way I get dressed or baking, but I also come from a family of creators, okay. all different types of creators. So my father is an engineer at IBM, so that's creating mm -hmm. in a way. Um, my grandfather was a painter, more realism. Okay. So he would take like National Geographic covers and then paint them amazing wow. like some real i'm gonna send you some stuff yeah, yeah, yeah i want to see this so um you know that then my mother she's also super artistic she's she sews like just growing up i had american girl dolls i think a lot of girls can relate right, to yeah, yeah. and she would always make the clothes because the clothes were so expensive yeah so she would make them for me um but then also my aunt she's a potter so i come from a very creative environment mm -hmm. so ha being around creatives fostered and really helped develop my creativity. Okay. Um, so yeah. Do you remember there being like a point where you were like, shit, this is what I want to do? Yes. So for the longest, I thought I wanted to be an attorney. Okay. So, and I guess that comes where the activist part of me uh -huh. wanted to fight for others. Okay. Um, and for the longest, there was like that that analytical side. So I think that comes in where my dad's very analytical in the sense of being a, um, an engineer. Okay. And then the creative side, just I think it was just born with. So I had that moment like really full time. So I went full time artist over five years ago. So creative. So like I'm self taught in Illustrator and Photoshop. Okay. And then um, I was like five years. I was like, you know what? I'm doing this, but I've always painted, drawn, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I really focused in and I was like, okay, this is, this is what I am going to do. So five years ago you start, right? Well, I, I go hardcore. You go hardcore. That's how I go hardcore. You, you go, you go full-time hardcore. Just like, this is your this job, is it. right? What was that like at the beginning? Like, were you, were you... Were you ever scared that like you wouldn't be able to do this because you couldn't pay the bills? Like what what was your driving factor in those early days? So I think so for me I lived um, initially so I, I come from initially from upstate New York, mm -hmm. moved down here into the city into Brooklyn, and I was living with my great aunt like ninety five great aunt like couldn't hear but she was like super active. She passed away. Um, I was in college, just finishing up my, um, I have my bachelor's in communication, mm -hmm. and I lost her. And it was like just such a devastating moment to me because she can't be, she became a second mother to me. And so, you know, just through hard times, you have to, you need an outlet. I think just, I think and overall everyone needs an outlet, mm -hmm. right? So. I was scared shitless because everyone around me, you know, my parents, yes, they were supportive, but they're like, no, you can't, you can't be an artist full time. Right. And that's also how, like, my grandfather, you know, he was a skilled artist, really, really good. But the time from he grew up in, that was frowned upon. Like, you can't survive, you can't support a family off of being an artist. Mm -hmm. But um, I did have a lot of moments that I was like, oh, shit. I'm scared shitless. Mm -hmm. um, for a year and a half, I slept on a friend's couch, like on a on a sofa mattress, because I was like, I I couldn't afford to live in New York and be an artist. So you know, you have to. I made sacrifices. Mm -hmm. um, so I had a lot of those moments to answer that, and a lot of oh shit, this is scary moments. When did you have the aha moment? Like, yeah, this is gonna be good. Um, I would say a few years back and I had to constantly keep reminding myself. Mm -hmm. So I realized that if everyone around me, you know, 
was saying you can't do it. Mm -hmm. or eventually, they, they jumped on the bandwagon and was like, all right, okay, Allison, we get it. It's going to happen. But um, it's just something you have to constantly tell yourself or had to tell myself. Mm -hmm. Like, all right, I'm going to get there. I'm going to keep moving forward. Positive energy and positive reinforcement help that. Do you still use that, like, when you have your bad days? Oh, heck yeah. When I have my bad days, I'm like, whoa, Allison, whoa, calm down. Like, not too long ago, you were on a friend's, you know, futon that it was for every day. And I was like, shit. I remember I would wake up and I'd be like, this fucking sucks. Like, this really fucking sucks. Because from the outside, everyone was like, oh, you're so successful. Everything is great. Everything looks good. But I'm just like... I, I don't go out, you know, I'm in the studio working all the time. I'm like, it's fucking sucks. So every single time I have a bad day, mm -hmm. I just remember saying to myself, I didn't have a studio at one point, right? I'm on a couch. I'm not where I want to be at all. So I, I, I remind myself where I was at one point and then where I am today and how far I've come in such a short period of time. Mm -hmm. So just, just have to remind yourself, that's all. And stay hungry. Mm -hmm. So if I just start to get too comfortable, I'm like, no, 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 don't want to go back there. That's that's a dope perspective. So talk to me about the activism and, and where that started from. I know you said you originally wanted to be a lawyer and some of that drives it. Did you see a lot of activism in your family growing up? So I, I think so. I saw that and I also seen a lot of people being like taken advantage of. Okay. Right. And I think there's there's um, I have the personality that I stand up for myself. So if I don't want that, I don't want that. And even just friends being taken advantage of or, you know, getting beat up on or whatever it may be. Yeah. I think it was just in me. Okay. It's always been a part of who I am to want to help, to to evoke change. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. So tell me about how you built that into your art, because I know there's a bunch of different collaborations you've done recently um, with a lot of different organizations. So I mean, when it comes to art, I like to try to take my art and like, how can I evoke change? How can I help other people? So whether it be selling my art, so I did a, a collaboration with the Female Collaborative over a year ago, I want to say. And it was with Women Rising and it was helping, you know, we sold art and took the money that was from the sales of the art and gave it to Women Rising, which was an organization that helped women that were in abusive relationships, help them build their career so they can make something of themselves instead of, you know, depending on the system and, and that type of thing. Um, and then also like I just worked with Bloomingdale's and the Kind Campaign and we did this really cool painting. Painting was Allison's session, mm -hmm. and it was anti-bullying. Like, I got bullied when I was young. I think everyone has gotten bullied at some point in their life or continue to get bullied. Um, so just bringing the art and, and helping young girls, just young kids in this generation build their self-esteem through art. That's dope, so talk to me about that. Like, talk to me about some of the experiences there, because that had to be very, humbling it definitely is like i also just did um with rbc bank um race for kids which was super cool we donated a bunch of bananas uh -huh. 700 bananas thanks to the port of wilmington that was actually really cool uh -huh. um and it is it was for it was a race for kids mental health and stuff like that so i feel you know the two biggest things for me is like mental health and just bullying. Mm -hmm. So like growing up, I was technically, like I had an IEP. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know like what the, mm -hmm. it's basically the state says, oh, okay, so you know, there's something wrong with you or you don't learn the same way everyone else does. Right. So I don't learn by you telling me how to do something. I learn by you showing me how to do something. Right. So just the same way, like if you say, Allison, you have to open this bottle a certain way, I need you to show me how to do it. But the state says, oh no, that's not the normal way of learning. Yeah. Well, that's because the education system is broken in this country. Completely broken. Yeah, yeah. So um, I know how it feels firsthand to be bullied and judged and all those things. Mm -hmm. So it's I want to I want help because I remember when 
I was younger, I didn't have that. Uh-huh. I didn't have someone saying, no, it's okay, Allison. Like, the way you learn, it's okay. It's for you. Yeah. And so I got picked on and bullied on and stuff like that. So Do I Do you feel like that made you more headstrong now? Yeah. I definitely think so. Because I know a lot of the kids from high school that would bully the shit out of me. They're all, they want to message me on Instagram and Facebook. Like, hey, what's up? It's like, no, I remember when you used to bully the shit out of me. Like, not cool. And I just, you know, I keep it be nice. Kindness kills and keep it moving. But um, it's learned me, it's learned, it's helped me learn how to handle people mm-hmm. and how to just kind of let things go off my back. Like what? Give me an example. Someone doesn't like my art. Yeah. Prime example. Okay, cool. Maybe Where- before I would have been like, yeah, they don't like my art. They feel some sort of like, okay, that's, that's your opinion of it. The old Allison might have gotten upset and, and her feelings. Do, do you remember when you stopped giving a shit what other people thought? Like, do, you, do does that does that moment, is that like a moment you remember? Like seeing that shift? Because a lot of people don't have that. A lot of people are, are either, they don't give a shit at all to start or they care about everything and it's very hard to transition either way. So I, I, I find it very interesting that, that like, that used to be you, but now you're just like, fuck it. The second that I no longer had an apartment, I didn't have my studio anymore, and I was sleeping on a, a couch, I stopped giving a shit, period. Because I was like, no one else is helping me. Like, who are you to judge? I, I, I guess it was just a, a aha wake-up moment. That mm-hmm. year of self-development and struggle, because you're in, you go from being comfortable being good financially okay to then just such a like drop right so quickly it's like high and low it just i i think that forced me to change and adapt with what was going on around me that makes sense yeah so what are some like future charity or what are some future art things coming coming from you in the okay. in the works there's a few things i have in mind right okay. i'll share like this idea that I have. Nothing where you want me to sign an NDA after this. Well, obviously not. I mean, at this point, it's just like... <laughs> um, so, for the longest time, I've always had this dream and this idea of creating a company, I guess you can say, or a branch off of who I am to have, like, basically a big building with studios everywhere, mm-hmm. right? And there would be like a lottery that artists, because the biggest problem for me is as a New Yorker, an artist, an artist based in New York, it's hard to find space to rent, to create in. Mm-hmm. But I would love to get a nice group of individuals, of creatives that are still developing and learning and having a space where they can learn about silk screen and a wood shop. And I know there's like in the Gowanus in Brooklyn, there's mm-hmm. a few places, mm-hmm. but like a lottery where you have to submit your work and you get chosen and let's say for a year you have rent free space but you can learn and absorb all this knowledge and all this information and um, change artists lives it's just an idea hopefully you know it will happen you know just big white walls a big warehouse with just the ability to create and do whatever you want to do Mm -hmm. i I mean i think that sounds dope i I know there's been some pops a pop-up locations Mm -hmm. of things like that but um you're absolutely right i mean the cost and i mean this is this is my business but like the cost to rent space is insane Mm -hmm. comparatively to you know the rest of, of america yeah um you've done a lot of work with brands Mm -hmm. Um, and that's something I know a lot of artists want to get to talk to me about like that process of getting that first brand and then how you now process or how you now maybe slightly alter your business to hope to do future work so when it comes to brands I think the biggest thing is so there's a lot of facets right is that the proper term facets Mm -hmm. Um, of me right so not only am I an artist but I'm very um, gifted when it comes to Illustrator and Photoshop and design. I dabble in a little Final Cut Pro and I'm teaching myself now um, After Effects 
which is like, oh god. She loves After Effects. Like, I want to love it. Yeah, yeah. I really do, but yeah. I, it's, it's how I felt about Photoshop and Illustrator. I wanted to love it so bad. I hated it at one point. Now I love it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I connect with brands on different levels. So because I'm, I'm well, you know, well taught in um, Illustrator. I'm an asset to a brand, so I can start creating graphic design work or cre creating a bunch of concepts and stuff like that. So being able to not only do artwork, I can say, hey, look, I can do this really cool artwork for you, but let me mock it up for you. Mm -hmm. So like when a client wants a piece of artwork, I mock it up beforehand. Like I actually give them a really close idea of what it's going to look like. So creating value in a company, bringing value to a company, mm -hmm. not only in a sense of art, but however else, whether it be ideas, um, that's how I think you connect with brands. But then also connect with brands that have the same ideas and, and thoughts and beliefs that you do. Mm -hmm. It's like I like when it comes to the Kind campaign. It's, right, it struck it's, home. It struck home when I, you know, with RBC and the Race for Kids, that struck home. So doing things that are passionate, I think, Businesses recognize that, but then also have a strong team behind you. So my business manager, I'm the art side of things. Mm -hmm. Vince, the business manager of, of, of stuff, he's uh, he's behind the scenes. You can't see him, but um, he really helps out a lot. So, so talk to me about about that business manager position because I mean I've interviewed a bunch of different artists and, and become very friendly with with a lot, and there's not many or very few that actually have that level of support. Somebody may have like a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a, or a cousin or a sister or whatever it may randomly be. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about that decision to hire that person mm -hmm. and, and how that how that works for your business and how it's helped you grow. Well, you definitely have to be, you have to make sure that you guys click. Mm -hmm. So it's not perfect. Him and I have gotten to arguments and not seen eye to eye on things. Right. Um, but he, we're, it's a balance. Mm -hmm. And as much as, you know, there's been people in the past where they were friends or friends of friends that would have thought about doing or tried to do it, but they didn't have the right qualifications. It's just like a job interview, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, what do you want? What are you lacking? So I said to myself, Allison, what do I lack? All right, um, you know, I'm not the greatest communicator when it comes to business. You know, I... When it comes to brand management and development, that might not be my strong point. Mm -hmm. So I want someone that has those strong points so that we can balance each other. Mm -hmm. um, and we actually met when at the, the, an event at the Female Collaborative at NBC. He was a panelist, a speaker, and I was showing my art. And we just clicked. He had really good energy, really good vibe. That's I'm really big about energy. Like I will not deal with someone if they don't have good energy but um i told i just started talking to him we started engaging with each other he's actually bought a few pieces of art and then like he just saw what i was lacking we mm -hmm. talked about it and i was like look like this is what i'm willing to do you know to give you when it comes to you just have to find someone that works <laughs> it's hard it took me quite some time and a lot of bad relationships and a lot of I've lost a lot of relationships things have crumbled apart but it's just like art like I've fucked up so many pieces of art and ruins like so much art wasted so much money but I learned so much right so um so do you enjoy fuck ups at the time no one time I got so angry at a piece of art that I I'm not sure if I should use the word shank. <laughs> I got really angry and I tore it apart. Okay. And it ended up being in the street. This was back in like Park, park Slope time. Yeah. Um, I don't enjoy the mess ups, but it happens a part. It's a part of the process. If you don't have it or you don't go through it, then you don't learn from it. You know, like something that I thought was a mistake ends up being like, wow. Like, this is actually, this is great. This was a great idea that I messed this up. So, yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, listen, it sounds like your your mindset's definitely in 
the place, the right spot. Like, and, and it's funny when you when you talk, I, a lot of things you say I, I are things that are how I run. Um, so I have no question that, that, that you'll be incredibly successful and this will grow just because that couch experience is, is, is something people aren't willing to do. It's so uncomfortable. Rice and bean couch, like I was having at one point, just to go back. I was like, I'm gonna save my money as much as I can, so I'm gonna eat rice and beans and some avocado, because you know, it's like the protein yeah, yeah, yeah. fat, it's nice. So I love a good black bean. But um, yeah, not many people are willing to go through that. And then still have a smile, you know, a face and a smile and be happy and be put on yeah. at all times. Cool, was well, there anything you wanna leave us with before we wrap? Oh man, is there anything I wanna leave you guys with? Vince, is there anything you can think of? He, he doesn't want to be involved, you know. I see. <laughs> um, follow me on Instagram. That's obviously for one. We'll definitely tag you somewhere in here. Yeah, yeah, tag, like. Um, but just for those that are artists in any realm, right? Creators, don't give up on yourself, right? Don't give up. Continue to fight. So every time you have those moments that you're like, I can't do this, remind yourself where you want to be. So, and then keep and surround yourself with quality people that have the same idea and same focus and same morales as you. You can't steer yourself wrong then. Couldn't agree with you. Listen, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll talk to you next